Hello everyone and welcome to today's laboratory session. For the rest of the semester, we'll be looking at various tests to determine the shear strength properties of salts. Today we'll be looking at the direct shear test and how you can easily set up one here in the lab. The direct shear test is quick and easy to run and it is practical for free draining and cohesionless materials like sands and gravels. Here in the lab, we have a load frame to apply a normal force and shear box on a shear box that contains the specimen that we want to test. The shear box has an internal diameter of 2.5 inches and an average specimen height of 1 inch. The shear box has an upper frame which is fixed and not allowed to move and a lower frame which is allowed to move in the horizontal direction by means of some rollers attached here at the base. At the end of the day, what you are trying to do is to create a horizontal shear plane where you can apply normal stresses and observe the corresponding shear stresses. You can also look at the vertical displacement as well as the horizontal displacement that the soil is going through. We run this test at different normal stresses, typically 1 TSF, 2 TSF and so on. And for each of these normal stresses, we we'll record the values of the peak shear stress. With these values of peak shear stress, we we'll plot a graph of shear stress versus normal stress. This will be a straight line graph that goes through the origin for cohesionless materials and the slope will be the angle of internal friction. For direct shear test, the drainage is not controlled and because the soil is forced to fill in the horizontal direction, we cannot plot more circle diagrams for the direct shear test. To run this test, we will be needing a soil sample, in this case a river sand, a typical cohesionless material. This is a spoon for scooping the material into the shear box. This is the lower frame of the shear box, and this is the upper frame of the shear box. We will be needing two glass screws to lock the shear box in place. This is the top platen, it goes on top of the shear box. We will also be needing a pair of porous stones and a pair of filter papers. We will also be needing a vernier caliper and a weighing balance. To start with, I'm going to place the first porous stone in the lower frame of the shear box and then a filter paper. And then I'm going to place the upper frame of the shear box and use the black screw to lock it in place. Then I'm going to weigh the sample. With the vernier caliper, I've marked a height of one inch inside the shear box, and now I'm going to place the specimen to that height. Then I'm going to place the second filter paper and then the second porous stone and then the top platen. Now I'm going to weigh the salt sample again. Now I'm ready to move the shear box over to the load frame. This is the load frame setup for the direct shear test here in the lab. Here is a horizontal geo jack. It has a load set attached to it here for the shear force and that has a maximum capacity of 2,000 pounds. Here also is the vertical geo jack. It has a load set attached to it here for the normal force. This also has a maximum load capacity of 2,000 pounds. This is a displacement transducer. It measures the vertical displacement of the soil as it undergoes testing. You probably will not be able to see this, but behind there is a data acquisition system. This right here connects the shear box to the horizontal load cell. And over there at the laptop, we have a program to read up the data and also set up the test before running it. Now I'm going to place my shear box into the load frame. And then 
now place the horizontal connector. Now you are ready to move out to the program, set up the test, and after. This is the program for the direct shear test. On the left is a schematic diagram of the actual test. Here are the rollers that allow the shear box to move in the horizontal direction. Here is the horizontal load cell. This is the reading for the horizontal load cell. Here is the vertical load cell and this is the reading for the vertical load cell. Here is the reading for the vertical displacement. And here is the reading for the horizontal displacement. The test is divided into two, the consolidation and then the actual shear. To start the test, we'll go to tools and create a new task. I've created the folder Spring 2020 and I'll just enter the test that we are going to run. Like I said before, we'll be running this test for 1 TSF, 2 TSF, 3 TSF and 4 TSF. This will be the first one and it will be 1 TSF. I'll save that and I'll say OK. And then I'll move over to the file to enter the specimen data. Here will be spring 2020. Here will be river sand. And here will be one TSF. The diameter of the specimen is 2.5 inches and the height is 1 inch. And then we'll save. One TSF again, save. And then we'll go to the test data and specify one TSF. This is for consolidation and it seems okay. For shear, we'll be um, running this test for 0 0.025 displacement rate, and the displacement limit is okay at 0 0.25 inches. For the load limit, as I said earlier, will be 2,000 pounds. Everything seems good and we save. Then I go to um, the sensors and set all to zero. Take a zero reading, okay. Particle load cell, take a zero reading, okay. DCDT, take a zero reading and OK. Now we are ready to start the consolidation. After a while, when the consolidation is done, then we'll move over to the shear. Now start consolidation. At this point, the consolidation should be done, and we'll just look at the plot to confirm that and move over to share. Yep, um, looks like we are good on consolidation, and we we'll just go over to share this moment. And um, start. Yep, remove the black screws. And we are good to go. The soil is now being um, shared, and when that is done, we'll move over to the next normal stress. That will be two TSF. At this point, our soil must have failed, so I'm just going to go ahead and look at the plots. Make this bigger. This is a plot of the shear force on the vertical axis and the horizontal displacement on the horizontal axis. From this plot, we can see that um, the soil got to a maximum load of about um, say 60 pounds and afterwards it dropped significantly <coughs> indicating 
that the soil has filled so I'll just close this particular one and move on to the next normal um, stress that will be 2 TSF So to save time, I've gone ahead to run the test for 2 TSF and 3 TSF. This right here is 4 TSF and this will be the last step for us for the direct shear test. At this time we should have enough data to determine the shear strength properties of our soil. At this point it looks like the soil has failed since these values are not moving by much. And I'll just go ahead and look at the plot to confirm that and exit the program. Right, our soil has filled and from this plot it shows that it got to a maximum load of about 220 pounds and I'll just go ahead and close the program and that will be the end for the direct shear test for us. Next we will look at the data reduction. Thank you for your time. We will have a Zoom meeting to look at the data reduction in Excel and generate plots for your reports. If you have any question regarding this lab exercise, you are free to ask me during the Zoom meeting or send me an email and I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you for your time once again. I understand that this is a very difficult time for everyone. Stay safe and I'll see you.